Joshua chapter 6, a loaded chapter. Now Jericho, this is a, the first conquest city in the land. And you'll find this city mentioned in Matthew, Mark, Luke, Hebrews. So let's go to Hebrews 11. See, quite interesting note here. Hebrews 11. The great faith chapter. You know, uh, Samson's here and he committed suicide. Some say, some religions say if you commit suicide, you know. In Hebrews 11, 29, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea. We know that. That's right after Egypt. As, as by dry land, which the Egyptians are say to do or drown. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. After they were compassed about seven days. You realize we go from the Red Sea. And we jump to... Joshua chapter 6. That is remarkable. Exodus 14 to Joshua 6. There is no mention in the faith chapter. From the other side of the Red Sea to now we're on the other side in the land of promise. Now Jericho straightly shut up. They got everything locked, signed, everything. The city is bolted. No one's coming in. None went out, and none came in. It's closed. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho. Uh, God, only thing I see is a city that's locked. I see a city that archaeology tells us that the inner wall was 12 feet thick. And the outer wall was 6 feet thick. There are two walls, archaeology tells us, of this great city. And there was a pathway between the two walls. If you were to put the walls together, you would have 18 feet width of a wall. You saw these cities were made. And God says, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho. God always says the impossible. What could the children of Israel have for weapons being out in the wilderness? Swords. Anything they conquered from other kingdoms. And the king, therefore, and the mighty men of our. Really, mighty men of our, they're, they're behind locked doors. Some mighty men, the chicken. And you shall compass a circle around the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Now, I could not find how long this wall was to walk around, but this is not no just you know, a city block. This is an entire nation. Jericho, one of the big cities. I would assume it took a while to walk around this city. And God says, I want you to walk around this city once. Thus shall thou do for six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns and seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times and the priest shall blow with the trumpets all right so go around the city six days one time that's six on the seventh day go around the city seven times so if you were to ask people, how many times did, did Israel go around Jericho? If they say seven, they're incorrect. Thirteen. They march around this big city thirteen times. Blowing ram's horns. 
They're coming to a battle of Israel, coming to Jericho to proclaim this great war against this great city, and they're marching around in a parade, blowing the horns. Now, somebody who's been active in the ministry, Lord, don't tell me there's nobody up on the top of those walls mocking the children of Israel. Ah, there they go again, huh? Hey, honey, look, it's about time. Come on, gather all the kids. Let's go on top of the wall of Jericho and watch those idiots. Hey, oh, you bunch of idiots. What are you going to do? I guarantee. Kind of unusual battle. And you ever notice throughout the Bible, you got unusual things going on with God. And it shall come to pass that when thou makest a long blast with the ram's horn. And you can find you can find on YouTube or other videos, just look up the sound of a ram's horn, you know, you, you can hear the play. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people will shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. Now the NIV says collapse. I have seen pictures of collapse and that's not flat. And we'll get into that a little bit later as we discuss the archaeology. It's not collapse. God says fall down flat and we'll see that in a moment. Not time for that right now. And the people shall ascend. There's the first time ascend shows up in the Bible. That's a remarkable word too. We'll see in a moment with archaeology. Because if the NIV is correct, they could not ascend with a collapse. We'll look at that in a moment. It's not time to discuss that. But get the word ascend and fall down flat. And then you got to go online. you got to look up archaeology, Jericho's walls. And again, you got to look at the videos. And you got to see. It's a remarkable study. So, shall fall down flat. This is God speaking. How dare you correct what God said? If you're going to change God from fall down flat to collapse, I wonder what you're going to say what God says about salvation that will put you in hell. Up. Every man straight before him. That's interesting. Up. That's another interesting word, verse 5. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, that would be uh, the Kohites. Let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Ark of the Lord. It doesn't say who, which priests who. Just seven of them. Seven's a complete number. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city. Circle it. You know, when you get a compass at a store, it, it, it makes round circles. A compass. You look at north, east, south, and west. It's a 360 degree circle. There's nothing wrong with the words. And let him that is armed, armies, pass on before the ark of the Lord. I thought the ark was supposed to be ahead of the people. Here the ark is following them. And here are seven priests blowing trumpets and here are armed soldiers marching around this city. Can you imagine how weird this looks? Like, I mean, we're reading the Bible. Can you just imagine how weird? And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns, notice how many times that keeps showing up, passed on before the Lord. So they're first, then the soldiers, then the ark. And blew with the trumpets. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests that blew the trumpets, and their rearward, and there's rear reward, that's the back of the back, came after the ark of the priests, going on and blowing the trumpet. So it's, it's a parade. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then Shall ye shall Joshua? Where'd you get that? Where'd you find that in, in verse one to nine? It's nowhere. That's Joshua saying it. God told him to say well, at that moment when it comes time, shout, shout, 
Joshua said, don't say anything at all. Now, was that in the parade or is that even when they went home to their tents? Was it seven days complete? Utter no voice at all. Don't use your mouth. And notice it's seven days. So one of the days they had to do it would be the Sabbath day. I don't know why Jesus never brought that to the Pharisees' attention. You did it on the Sabbath day. What did Joshua and the men of Israel do around Jericho? They had seven days. One of them days had to be the Sabbath day. But they didn't believe the Bible. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. One time, we went into their tents. I don't know if they could talk, but... Then Joshua rose up early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horn before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but their rearward came after the ark of the Lord, and the priests going on, blowing with the trumpets. Uh, every morning, this would happen. I don't know how long it took. And like I said, you'd see the people in Jericho, hey, it's time for them to go do their thing. Let's go watch. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned unto the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day. Now it doesn't say when this week started, this seventh day is the Sabbath day or right in the middle, you know, where Jesus, you know, died on a Wednesday. You know, we don't know. It just says seven days. We don't know what seven days. That they rose early about. The dawning, that's the first time that word shows up, dawning of the day, right early in the morning, and compass the city after the same manner seven times. This time it's seven times, not just once. Only on the day they compass the city seven times. There's 13 times now. And it came to pass at the seventh time. Now we're going to be, and I can't say much. And maybe I'm speculating there are people on the wall. But do you remember somewhere else in your Bible where there were people sitting on something and the walls came down by Samson? And the Bible says Samson killed more people at that moment than he did his entire life when he brought the walls down. Bible with Bible, if possible, but I could be wrong. And it came to pass, verse 16, at the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpets. Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to the Lord. Here is a cursed city. Only Rahab, the harlot, <laughs> shall live and all that are with her in her house all her family everyone's there cornelius the philippian jailer what must i do to be saved believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house when peter comes walking in cornelius house he walks in the room the whole family's there isn't that interesting So if Rahab pictures a Gentile who is saved, do you think what, what, what do you think God thinks of the Gentiles in the church age before they're saved? You're a harlot. You sell yourself out for anything. Now, if that's not America, what is? All that earned house because she hid the messengers that are sent. Well, look at that salvation. Look at Rahab's salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved? No. Go build an ark? No. Don't eat that fruit? No. She protected the spies of the children of Israel. And God said, I will bless them that bless you. So he blesses her by protecting Israel. So that's her reward. And there are people, Jesus said, in the tribulation period are going to help the Jews. 
many different ways and they don't even know they're doing it. And he says, you're going to be blessed and you're going to enter into the kingdom because you helped the Jews. Rahab pictures a tribulation Gentile that's going to have all kinds of turmoil in her city. And she comes out alive. Everybody else is dead. Anybody who's not Rahab and in her house dies in Jericho. And ye, in any wise, keep yourself from the accursed thing. Uh-oh. That's going to come up the next chapters. There's a cursed thing in Jericho. And Joshua says, you keep away from it. And make the camp of Israel to curse. And trouble it. Write down, Joshua is a prophet. <laughs> because it hasn't happened, but it's going to happen in chapter 7. Joshua is not a king. He's not a priest. He's a prophet. Moses, kind of king, not really, but a priest and a prophet. And you'll see men in the Bible that will hold one, two, very few, three of them, of these titles, prophet, priest, and king. David was all three. Saul was a king. He was a prophet. He tried to intervene into the office of the priest when God said, I'm done with you. So that's an interesting thing with, with the men in the Bible, prophet, priest, and king. Joshua is only a prophet. But all the silver, remember that, next chapter, Lord willing. And gold, remember that, next chapter. Vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. And they shall come to the treasury of the Lord. Everything in Jericho belongs to God. Get that. Chapter 7. Lord willing, we get there. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the shout of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout. That the wall fell down flat. And when you look up the archaeology, when you look at the pictures, that wall not only fell flat, but it made a ramp. Why? So the people went up. When God flattened those walls of Jericho and his archaeological evidence, and they'll show you the pictures. It didn't collapse. God said it fell flat, and when it fell flat, it made a ramp. <laughs> Why did it make a ramp? So Israel can go up into it just march right up it no ladders no step ladders no step you just walk right up the ramp isn't that interesting that's a collapse have you ever seen people trying to find people in a building that collapse you there's all kinds of rubble not here every man straight before him and they took the city thank you god Thank you, God, you did not do the NIV and made it collapse. God made it easy to conquer the city. Throw your modern Bibles in the garbage. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city. Thou shalt not kill both man and women, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. They killed it all. There is something very wicked that the Bible does not record that this city is involved, that God said, utterly all of it. And don't you take any gold, don't you take anything, that's mine. And the main story of the woman that we read about Jericho outside of Israel is a harlot. And that's it, that's all we know about Jericho. It's a vast, wicked city. But uh, Joshua said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house. Imagine man of God telling go well, Go into the harlot's house. And bring out thence the woman and all that she has, as ye swear unto her. 
and the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab. All right, Rahab one. Her father two, her mother three, and her brethren, we don't know how many, and all that she had. Her stuff went with her too. And they brought out her kindred, her family, and left them without the camp of Israel. There's a perfect illustration of Acts 16.31 right there. All her house were saved, weren't they? Imagine finding Acts in Joshua. Wasn't she in jail? You no. Know. Wait a minute. It said over here, Jericho was straightly shut up because of children of Israel. No man could go in, no man could go. Isn't that jail? Wasn't there a miraculous opening of the prison doors in Acts 16? Wasn't there a miraculous of this walls coming down? And if you look up the pictures, they will think, they think, they're not really too sure. But according to all the walls that are flat, there is one portion, if you look on the internet, the picture, there's this one portion of that wall that's not flat. That's Rahab's house. They just don't know where it was in that rubble. The Bible's true and archaeology will show you the pictures. You look them up. They will show you. All the walls are flat, but one section of that wall. Here we are, Rahab and her family. Now here's another one, verse 24, interesting. And they burnt the city with fire. Now remember Joshua said, get rid of everything. Everything. They found, archaeology found, three feet of ashes in this city. Everything was destroyed. You would, they, they'll show you if, if you find a good video. They'll show you that here is a place where they kept the grain. Here's a place where they kept barley. Here's a place they kept wheat. And they said that the archaeology find that, that it's all been turned to ashes. It has been all been burnt. They say military campaigns don't do that. When you go into a city and you find grain products, you take that grain products for you, for your horses and for your men. And they said when they entered the Jericho, it is three feet of ash. They burned the barley, they burned the olives, they burned everything that were in the storehouses as God told them to do. Complete obedience. And why? You find it in Hebrews 11. They believe God, except for one man. We'll talk about him later, Lord willing. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Everything else was killed and burned. Archaeology will tell you. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot. Did Joshua save Rahab? That's a quite interesting statement there. Joshua saved Rahab. Jehovah saves. Alive in her father's household and all that she had, she dwelt in Israel even unto this day. So she's among the Israelites because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Well, that's interesting. And the pottery that they found in this city dates to 1407 BC. And the date that we have here is 1451 BC. It just goes right along with the date. 50 year old pots. <laughs> and that's how archaeology will tell some of the, the dating of these cities is by the pottery. And Joshua jured them at that time. Now, that's the first time that word shows up, and it only shows up another place, 1 Samuel 14, 21 or 4. 1 Samuel 14, 14, 1 Samuel 14, 21, uh, 27. My writing is terrible. 24. Even worse. Not 21 or 27. Fourteen twenty-four. I'm in Second Samuel. 
Okay, you're getting the right book. 14. You can see, 1424. Ah. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, and Saul had adjured the people, swear by an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food unto even. So this battle is over, and, and Saul does something stupid. He's going to put an oath on the people, don't eat any food. And Joshua adjured them at the same time, saying, Cursed be the men, man before the Lord. Ooh, this curse goes with the Lord. That rises up and buildeth this city, Jericho. It's destroyed. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest shall he set up the gates thereof. So, cursed be this city. And when it's rebuilt, 1 Kings 16.34. 1 Kings 16.34. That was the last verse in Joshua 6. It is the last verse in 1 Kings 16.34. In his days, this is Ahab, did Heo, Heo, the Bethelite, build Jericho. He laid the foundation therein in Abraham, his firstborn, and set up the gates there in his youngest son, Segrub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. Again, Joshua is a prophet. And that city of Jericho is found in the Gospels. A cursed city. So the Lord was with Joshua and the same noise throughout all the country. I guarantee the noise. Remember Jericho? Yeah, I've been to Jericho. That's a great place. It's gone. What? What do you mean it's gone? You're not children of Israel? Oh, I don't want to hear about them. And no Jew settles in Jericho. They leave Jericho and Joshua said, that is a cursed city. Let's get out of here, boys. Next city. And we're going to run into trouble in chapter 7. And in chapter 6, the number of a man, we see gold, silver, brass, iron. Uh-oh. We see a cursed thing. Uh-oh. And then we close the chapter.